So, let us discuss today combing operations. Combing operations can be divided into two types of operations. One is basic operations and the other one is secondary operations. What are the basic operations? Feeding the stock from the prepared lab. We have already seen in previous class uh, that the feed material to the combing machine is not saliva, but a lab. And lab is basically a sheet of cotton which is rolled into a cylindrical form. So, we actually feed the lab. So, feeding is the one of the very important operations. You have to keep feeding the lab where we the lab is full of short fibers and long fibers all are mixed in the lab. Then we have to comb out the short fibers, foreign particles, naps, all those things we can we have to take it out from the lab and also we have to paralyze the fibers that is the, the another operations. The third operation is detaching the comb fringe from the lab. So, once we remove all the short fibers or foreign particles from the nap or naps, then the job is which is left is that the detachment of the comb fringe. So, that is another operation that we have to perform. Then comes piecing up the fleece tuft as the comb fringe that we detach, it is in the form of a thin fleece. So, this fleece needs to be pieced up with the fibers in the returned wave. We will see this thing, this will be more clear as we go through the course that as we remove the fringes one after the other, the cone fringes are removed in a sequential manner. We keep on removing the fringes and you will see how the fringes are overlapped one on the top of the other to make a continuous sliver. So, this process is known as piecing up. So, these are the these four are the primary or basic operations and the secondary operations are condensing the comb wave into a sliver. What the machine is going to produce is basically a thin film of fibers. So, we have to condense this thin film of fibers and we have to give it a shape which looks like a sliver and we also go for doubling of the sliver on the table. So, there is a table on which several slivers will be doubled together. You will see that the machine generally has either 6 or 8 heads. So, we actually produce 6 or 8 slivers of the machines and these slivers are then actually doubled together before they are drafted. So, the next process is the drafting of the double slivers through a drafting zone, but the name generally is given draw box. Basically, it is a, a drafting zone on which we will be doubling the slivers that we are producing on each combat head. So, once these slivers are doubled together and drafted, what we get? again is a thin film of fibers or fleece of fibers. What we now need to do is to again condense it. So, we condense it by calendaring process. After calendaring and we pass the material through a trumpet, so that we get a condensed sliver again and now we pack the material that is combed sliver into a container for further handling and processing and that container is basically a can and you are all familiar with can because you have already studied the carding machines and you have also already studied the draw frame. So, you know that the package for the sliver is can which protects the sliver from all sides. So, that is what has to be done. So, these are the various operations which are involved during combing. 
Now, we will discuss the operation 1 that is lap feeding and nipping. First, we have to feed the lap. The lap contains all types of fiber short and long and also it contains some impurities which we could not really uh, remove by the blow room or by the uh, carding machines. Some naps are still may be left. So, the first job is lap feeding and lab netting. If you look at the picture as drawn here, what do you see? This is representing the lap. These are the two rollers on which the lap is resting and here there is a piece, pair of rollers which are called feed rollers. Then there is a plate here, this plate which is horizontal, we call it bottom nipper plate. So, this is basically a nipper plate. The name is nipper because it nips the lap, it grips the lap. That is why the name is nipper because it is the form of a plate. So, the name is nipper plate. Similarly, there is another plate on the top which is shown vertically here and this is also similar. The design is similar to a plate and we call it top nipper plate and this is bottom nipper plate. Between these two plate, the lap sheet is gripped. So, their job is to grip the sheet and then as you see at the bottom, there is a cylinder and part of the cylinder is having saw tooth or needles. These are basically acting as a comb. So, the name is cylinder comb and the name of this part as you will see in the some other slides, we call it half lap. Anyway, right now you may not, uh, if you do not know the name does not matter. So, you remember that there is a cylinder which is and on the surface of the cylinder part of it is only covered by needles. So, what we do? The feed roller moves the lab by 4 to 6.5 mm and the nipper remains open. So, when we feed the lab, we have to unroll the lab and after an unrolling, the feed roller is going to feed it forward. So, when it feed it forwards, these two plate should be in open state as it is shown in this diagram, so that the sheet can move forward. Otherwise, the sheet is going to pile up behind these two plates. So, when I am going to push this by the feed roller, we have to ensure that the two nipper plates remain in an open state, so that the sheet can move without any hindrance. From there, we go to the next picture. If we look at these two pictures and try to compare, what we see is this that the nipper plates are in closed configuration now. That is, the, the top nipper plate has descended, it has gone down and it is gripping the lap. The lap is gripped between the two nipper plates. So, the top nipper plate descends and the grip the lap sheet. This is, so we feed it and then we nip it. This is operation 1. After this comes next operation. Once the lap is gripped, our next job as you see in the diagram is to pass the series of needles, this series of needles through the lap sheet. So, as you see it here, the cylinder comb needles combs the lap fringe and carries away anything not held by the nippers. That means, all the fibers which are loose in this part of the fringe or if there is any impurities which are left there or any nape which steps which are left there, all those will be taken out by the needles from the cylinder comb. So, like short fibers, naves, any dirt particles which are left in the projected fringe, everything will be 
removed by the cylinder comb. So, the purpose of these needles is to make sure that all those loose particles as well as the loose fibers are removed or extracted. So, this is from there we go to the next picture. What you see it here that while the combing process was going on the lap was gripped between the two nipper plates. If you do not grip it the entire sheet will be taken away by the cylinder comb. So, you have to, have to make sure that while the needles are passing through the fringe the lap sheet must remain gripped by the two plates and this gripping should continue till the last row of needles has passed through the lap sheet. Till that point of time the nipper plate should hold the fringe or hold the sheet. From there, so once the cylinder comb has taken out suppose these are the fibers which are on the surface of these short fibers like this some particles which are there they are filled with all those shorter, shorter length of fibers and some dust particles the combing job is over. So, on the combing job is over the nippers will open again you see here the nippers are open nippers have opened and the assembly as a whole is moving forward. So, if you look at it just concentrate on the arrows if you see the arrow you see this bottom plate and the top plate both are moving on the left hand side look at the arrow directions it is moving on the towards the detaching roller and the nipper plates are gradually opening. So, they are moving up the top nipper plate is moving up. So, we create a opening between this so that the sheet is no more gripped between the two plates and the assembly the nipper assembly we call it this whole part is actually nipper assembly this as a whole is moving forward that is here from there we go to the next slide that is operation 3 which is basically detachment of the comb fringe. Because the fringe has been combed we have removed the short fibers what is left now we have to take out this comb fringe we have to detach the fringe and therefore, the assembly as a whole will keep moving forward and forward and the time will come when the end of the cone fringe is going to reach the detaching roller nip. But prior to that what is happening what was detached in the previous cycle that is the green part if you look at concentrate on this the green part is the fringe which was detached in the previous cycle. What we do here in order to you know, create a continuity the previously detached fringe will be fed back it will be fed backwards. So, a little tail of the previous fringe will be hanging here as you see in this diagram and the new cone fringe which is coming towards the detaching roller nip will actually fall on the top of it. So, that here there will be overlapping this is very important if they do not overlap there is no continuity between the succeeding fringes that we will generate. So, the previous fringe that we detached earlier in the previous cycle actually remains within the grip of detaching rollers part of it is fed back and it keeps hanging as shown in the diagram and the new cone fringe will actually arrive and fall on the top of it. So, there will be little overlapping zones between the two fringes this is what is going to is shown in this diagram. From there now if we look at this this it will be clear now 
once the overlapping is over, the detaching roller starts rotating in the opposite direction. If we compare the rotational direction of the detaching roller, let us go back to the previous slide, it is rotating in this direction in the anti-clockwise directions. Anti-clockwise direction is required because we have to feed back the previously detached fringe. Now, when we have to actually detach the fringe, the direction of rotation of the detaching roller has to change. So, in this diagram, if you look at carefully, you see that the detaching roller rotational direction is clockwise now. Earlier, it was anti-clockwise because we had to feed back the previously detached fringe. And in the present case, overlapping is over. Now, this green fringe which was detached earlier and the new one, if they are overlapping on each other, now the detaching roller has started moving in the forward direction or the rotational direction is forward, it is clockwise and as a result, it will pull the cone fringe. So, part of the cone fringe will now be removed by the detaching rollers. After this, what is going to happen? There is a job that is the to be done by the top comb, which is stated here combing by top comb. The top comb is another comb. There is a difference between top comb and, and the cylinder comb. Cylinder comb on the surface of the cylinder, you have a large number of needles and we call this as a cylinder comb, whereas the top comb is basically a plate and on that same plate there is a set of one row of needles are fixed and this plate is going to descend when the detaching process is going on. The top comb will descend and penetrate the fringe before the detaching starts. As a result, what is going to happen? The trailing end of the fibers of the cone fringe are further combed by the needles of the top comb as they could not be combed by the needles of the cylinder comb. This is what is important here. The cylinder comb only combs the front part of the lap that we feed and then it moves away. Now, the detaching rollers are going to grip all those ends which are projecting forward and will pull all those fibers. While doing so, actually many of these fibers are quite long and their trailing end may still remain in the uncombed part of the fringe. So, you have to remember that the same fiber, the forward part has been combed by the needles of the cylinder comb but the trailing part of the same fibers have not been combed by the needles of the cylinder comb, because they are still inside the lap, they could not be combed. And therefore, when they are gripped and they are pulled forward by the detaching roller nip, there is every possibility that the trailing ends which are not have not been combed by the cylinder comb will now get combed by the needles of the top comb, because otherwise what is going to happen? The telling part will not get combed and there are many short fibers as well as some dust particle dust or depths can be carried forward by the trailing end of many fibers whose forward ends have been combed to avoid the entry of such uh, nips or short fibers or some other you know, particles which are there into the cone part of the material, we create a barrier by putting a top comb in their path. So, the top comb has a series of needles and these needles are very, very close to each other. So, there is only one set of needles here and these set of needles are going to basically comb the trailing part of the fringe which is being detached.
from there. So, detachment is over. So, we have fed the material, then we have gripped it, then forward part of the lap that we have fed that has been combed by the needles of the cylinder comb. Now, the fringe is moved forward and we detach it with the help of detaching rollers. So, the job is done. One set of operation is over from feeding to detachment. So, what is left now is cleaning of the cylinder needles. We have to clean with these needles as we have said as shown earlier contain a lot of short fibers, a lot of naps, a lot of dust particle, dirt and many other impurities. So, before it goes to the same zone for combing again, we have to clean this. So, what we have is a brush. So, in the rotational path of the cylinder comb at the bottom of it or somewhere here, there is a brush. So, what happens now? The nipper assembly returns, the nipper remains open as you see it here, so that the lap sheet can be fed again. So, what is going on simultaneously is at the one side we are cleaning the needles of the cylinder comb by brush. So, the material loose fibers will be passed on to the brush and from brush we will suck them out. At the same time, the nippers already have opened, the whole assembly moves backward and we again start feeding a fresh lap, the same lap, another part of the lap is being fed now and a new cycle begins. The needles of the combing cylinder that rotates continuously comes into contact with the bristles of this revolving brass. The impurities fibers attached to this combing segment is removed by this brass as I told earlier and once they are on the brass, from the brass we can further remove them by using suction. So, this is how the process of generation of combed fringe goes on and so you can see that the entire process is discontinuous in nature. The operations are happening in a particular cycle and once the fringes are ready, uh, we keep on generating cone fringe one after the other and how many fringes we generate per unit time. If the machine speed is let us say 300 rpm or we call it 300 nits per minute generally. Then in one minute we are generating 300 fringes, cone fringes. So, 300 cone fringes if we generate in one minute, if we can find out how much time it takes to generate one fringe. So, one minute means 60 second. So, in 60 seconds we are generating 300 fringes typically. So, therefore, you can find it out how much time I need to take one fringe, it is 60 by 360. So, it is basically one sixth of a second. That means, in one sixth of a second we are actually performing all the operations that we have already discussed. So, many operations, it took so much time for me to discuss these operations and explain to you, but all these things are happening in one sixth of a second. After the fringes are generated, the this is this slide shows the fringes, suppose fringes of 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. The successive pull out detached fringes are placed next to each other in a series with a slight overlap. Like if these are the fringes, we actually create a structure like this where there is a overlapping zone and by overlapping, 
the continuity is maintained. Now, if we look at this fringe, I have drawn it in a typical manner, looks like a trapezoid. So, what happens is that if we study the mass distribution, I will show you later on of the detached fringe, then we will find this fringe, the mass distribution in the detached fringe is not uniform from one end to the other end. The mass is not really constant. So, what we see here the somewhere at the middle it is going to be almost constant though this may vary from machine to machine. On the two sides there is a slope that means the mass per unit length on the two sides of the fringe will gradually reduce and somewhere at the middle the mass will remain more or less constant, but this may as I said this exact now pattern of mass distribution may vary depending upon the type of machine that we use or the type of fibers and the process parameters that we keep. Anyway, if this is the typical mass distribution then we have to overlap them. So, if we create overlap structure like this and that will give me a final structure what we see the mass distribution is more or less uniform. So, by proper overlapping we can to some extent nullify the uh, the uh, no the uh, the mass distribution uh, which are we seen in the uh, detached cone fringes. The wave is too weak even after this overlapping the this is basically overlapped wave overlap thin film of fibers. This is actually very very weak the fibers are two parallel and they are separated from each other this is very very weak and what we need is to consolidate the wave first. So, what is the mechanism of consolidations as we have already seen earlier that the only mechanical means through which we can consolidate a wave like structure of fiber is to pass it through a trumpet. That is we make the material to pass through a constricted space, so that reaction force develops on the fibers and the fibers gets compacted. We can also on the top of it we can also pass this this compacted material under uh, calendar rollers. The calendar rollers are basically heavily weighted rollers which will also compress the fiber assembly and as a result we will be able to create a structure where there will be some strength. So, that is what we do that we make the wave to pass through a narrow space and transform the sheet which is a two dimensional sheet into a round shape sliver first and we call it a sliver and now the slivers are fibers will pass over a long table which is there in front of the machine. When you discuss the machine in details you will know that a machine will have normally today all the machines have 8 combing heads. So, from each combing head we will produce one sliver. So, 8 slivers will be running parallel to each other and they will go towards a zone which we call drawing zone. In the drawing zone the slivers from several heads are doubled together and they are again drafted on a drafting unit known as draw box. So, once the drafting is done this is like a draw frame again it is a basically in the form of a sheet we have all know that uh, once the slivers are drafted what we get in front of the front roller is basically a sheet of fibers. Now, this sheet is has no strength again. So, to again we consolidate. So, we will pass it through a trumpet 
and we can have a pair of panda rollers also to further you know strengthen the assembly of fibers and then they will be laid into a can in the form of coils. So, those things we have already studied the how to you know, make a package for sliver same sort of you know, mechanism is here to pack the comb sliver within a can. What are the benefits of combing that we get? One is the irregularity of the combed yarn is less than carded yarn. Whom this combed sliver will be converted into finally into a yarn, then the yarn will be superior than a yarn that we make where the fibers have not undergone combing process. By removing the short fibers, there will be a tremendous improvement in the regularity of the yarn. There will be reduction in thick and thin place in the yarn. Thick and thin places are basically kind of faults in the yarn. So, this create problem as far as the appearance of the fabrics are concerned. Also, they can create you know, processing troubles in the subsequent processes that could be end breaks on weaving, during weaving and also breaks during winding and warping process. So, numbers of thick and thin places also get reduced because of the removal of short fibers. There could be an increase in yarn tenacity also due to removal of short fibers. Naps also can be removed because so many needles are passing through the fibers. So, a lot of naps are also removed by this process and the yarn as a whole becomes smoother and the hairiness also reduces all because of removal of short fibers. Short fibers is a source of hairiness in the yarn. So, lesser they are in the material less will be the hairiness. Other benefits are improvement the running performance of ring frame less end breaks during spinning because short fibers are there not there the drafting falls on ring frame on speed frame will be less and as a result the end breaks also will be less. When long fibers are spun the necessary yarn twist is reduced which has a positive effect on hand value of the product. If we use only long fibers to spin a yarn then as a lesser twist we can get the desired strength. Whereas, if we want to go for a carded yarn because there are many short fibers we have to put more twist into it to get a certain value of strength. So, if I fix the level of strength then the twist that I need to achieve that strength will be less in the case of combed yarn in comparison to carded yarn. So, that is so you can reduce the twist and if you reduce twist there is a positive effect in terms of productivity and the other effect is that the hand value also reduces that is less of the twist softer is the yarn always. So, that way also it helps spinning limit of the fiber material can be shifted towards fine count but because, because of the removal of short fiber I am left with only longer fibers and we can spin a little finer count yarn if we do not have the short fibers in it. From the same mixing if we want to go for a carded yarn production the finest count that you can produce in little coarser than from the same mixing if I go for if I go through the combing route and remove the short fibers we will be able to enhance the spinning limit that we will be able to spin little finer count that is the advantage. Lateral blending is improved also because the process in the process of lab making and in the process of doubling of the slivers on comber and post combing also there is a drop frame passage. So, there is a lot of opportunity for blending of the fibers that is why it says the lateral bending is improved 
The other thing is danger of fiber loss during use is also reduced. This is the loss is because of the you know when the yarns is too hairy, then in the case of weaving, there will be a lot of fiber shedding. The short fibers or the hairs are predominantly made of short fibers. The short fibers actually cannot penetrate and remain within the structure of a spun yarn. They will be generally on the surface of the spun yarns. And therefore, whenever there is abrasion, these fibers will easily move out from the surface of the yarn and they will fall. So, wherever there is a possibility of abrasion, which is quite high when you actually you know, weave the yarns, there is a tremendous abrasion between heel dye and the yarn, between the reed and the yarn. So, the yarn is hairy, a lot of fibers will move out from the surface and they will fall. So, surface fibers will be more in numbers when we have short fibers, because short fibers generally have a, they cannot go inside the core of the yarn, their migration pattern is such, they remain generally on the surface. That is why the fiber loss is reduced, that is why even during knitting also, same thing happens, lot of friction is there between the uh, needle and the yarn, there also there will be advantage if we go for combed yarn. The processing performance as I already discussed, the loom also will improve. So, there are so many benefits that we get uh, because of this combing and uh, here we now stop this particular discussion and we will again take the some other aspects of the combing process in the next lecture. Okay, thank you.